everyone, it's me again and welcome to Faith's Faces. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Faith Grenade and I put makeup videos here on YouTube. And you should subscribe and hit that little bell icon down below. It'll notify you every time I upload so you don't miss a minute of this riveting action. You know your day is riveting when the most exciting thing to happen to you is an oil delivery. Adulting? Is this what adulting feels like? You've stumbled across Faith's faces today, which is usually a get ready with me or a makeup tutorial. I finally have a reason to put makeup on and time to do it. What? A lot of you guys know I've been really, really busy uh, with, you know, job things and life things, you know, client things and all of that other stuff, training things. I have so much going on as, you know, my year of 2019 is starting to shape up. I've got a lot happening and sometimes I have to phone it in for the channel a little bit. But, you know, I've been making videos consistently for you guys for the last five years. I've been on YouTube for six years, but I've been making videos every single week for the last five years straight without missing a single solitary week. And sometimes that's tough. But this week we finally got a chance to sit down and play in the lab and do some makeup. And we've got a treat for you today. This is what we're doing. Beautiful, vibrant green absolutely gorgeous and i used the juvia's place the tribe palette uh this was one of the palettes featured in my haul last week you guys saw how excited i was about this if you've seen that video it's greens i love greens and it's also greens juxtaposed with other colors that complement green really well like oranges and bronzes and this deep brown over here that's got like a mustardy yellow green undertone to it i'm absolutely in love with the way this came out is it anything revolutionary no is it a look i've done before probably but i don't care it is so gorgeous and i'm loving these greens and how bright and vibrant they are. And if you want to know how to get this beautiful, bright green eye catching look, then just keep on watching, baby. Hello, everyone. Okay, let's get started. I'm so, so excited. This eye is not fully done yet. I just wanted to make sure I got uh, most of it done before I deepen things up on both eyes because I do have a bridal trial today. I feel okay wearing weird makeup for it though because this is a friend of a friend, so she already knows. I'm weird. <laughs> Honestly, most of my brides know that though. Like, you don't bring me on as a bridal makeup artist if you want your standard ho-hum diddly-dum blah blah boring as fuck bridal look. I mean, people see my portfolio, they know I'm about the weird shit. So if you can't ride with that, then I'm not your makeup artist. Simple as that. Uh, we're gonna take Maasai, which is this light, nope, that one, that light ass like chartreuse green, really lime green. And I'm going to take this on a Smith 232 brush, which is a big, fluffy, crease ass brush. Y'all know the drill. These Smith brushes are amazing. When I go to IMATS in April, I need to make a note to myself. Um, I think this time I'm going to actually bring a list with me uh, to IMATS of things that I definitely want to pick up while I'm there. That way I don't get so overwhelmed and end up forgetting things because I know I want to pick up more Smith brushes. And that's probably what the whole trip is gonna be about for me, is building my kit out with some really, really solid brushes. Because I do have a lot of like affordable brushes in my kit, which isn't a bad thing, but I mean, you know, platinum, gotta upgrade every now and again. This is our transition shade. And you can see, even on someone as light complected as I am, this is showing up. Like a lot of the problem with these lighter greens is they tend not to show up on my skin. They tend to basically just look like my skin, but slightly jaundiced. But this is definitely showing up on me. Full pigment, full out right off the bat, but you can also build it. So you can apply it in a sheer way and sort of build it up slowly as you go. Simple and easy, right? I just whipped that on in like two and a half seconds. So now we're gonna take the Smith 230, which is the smaller version of the 232, and we are gonna dip into Tootsie, which is this right here, Tootsie. Um, deeper, grassier green, beautiful color. I love this color, especially in eye looks like this. It just is like bright and vibrant and amazing, so. 
we're going to take that in the outer corner and we're going to build this up quite a bit. Because this one, she starts out a little shy if you don't like pack her on. She starts out a little bit pigment shy, but I find that that's the case with most greens like this. It must have something to do with the, pig the pigments that they have to use to make these. Um, they do start out a little bit shy. You have to build them up but I don't really mind that as much as long as the product can be built up. Popping that in and then I'm gonna come back in with the 232, nothing else on it, just whatever's left over uh, from our work earlier. And we're just gonna blend out the upper edge of that mid-tone color. So now I am gonna add the lid shade really quickly and then we'll deepen things up. That's my eyebrow brush. Where is my lid brush? There it is. It was hiding under the palette. So I'm gonna take the shade Coro, which is this guy right here. Beautiful champagne lime green duochrome. I'm talking like fish scales. This thing is so pretty. And I'm gonna plot that all the way over the lid on the inner corner and a little bit on the lower lash line as well. This is a little bit of a flaky one. She's flaky, but she's pigmented though. And she's beautiful, so I don't mind dealing with a little bit of flake. And again, you do have to build a couple of layers of this. And that's really, it's got nothing to do with the quality of the shadow and everything to do with the fact that it's a light color. Light color shadows tend to be a little bit on the sheer side, but Luckily for us, this one builds up quite nicely within about two layers, two to three layers. It's fully opaque. Pop that into the inner corner. And some of the shadow goes a long way. So then I'm gonna take the angled part of that brush, the little slant here, and I'm gonna dip it in that same shade. And I'm just gonna run that across the inner part of the lower lash line right like so. It's what I love about this Smith brush. It is so versatile. I can use it for a million different parts of the eye. It's fluffy enough that it could even do a little blending as well. So I could do, I could literally do a full eye look with just this brush and be totally fine. And there you go. Easy, right? Now I'm gonna take my mid-tone, my Tootsie brush, my grassy green, and I'm gonna run that along the rest of the lower lash line. This is a little bit of a big brush to use on the lower lash line. So this is definitely more something you would use if you want like really, really diffused, really smoky kind of color. I'm gonna take this same brush and I'm gonna dip it into San right here, which is this deep dark green. I'm literally just gonna tap this in here. Like, boop, that might've already been too much. But um, we're gonna really work with this very gently in the outer corner. I don't want this to get too smoky but I do want to deepen it up a little bit. So it's kind of sticking a little bit. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that, but you see this area right here where it's really sticking and then it's sort of patching everywhere else. That's interesting. I'm not sure why that's happening, but not sure if that's a problem with the shadow or with me. We'll just try to work around it. it might just be the brush I'm using might be the blending technique or something. I'm not sure. Could just be there wasn't enough product to spread the way I wanted it to, which is fine. We can adapt. Okay. Yeah, it's looking a little better now. I think it just needed a little bit more. And sometimes darker shades can do that. They will stick where you put them and they don't really move that well. But it might just be that you don't quite have enough on your brush for it to travel the way it wants to. Uh, so just add a little bit more and keep working in there. Okay, so we're deepened up on the other outside corner. I can always do a little more blending here and a little more application in a second, but I am gonna take a little tiny tap of that deep dark green, the uh, San color, and I'm gonna pop it a little on the outer corners just to link up the lower lash line and the upper. 
I have to be very careful doing this because with this brush, which is not what I would normally use for this particular step, uh, shit could go wrong. So now I'm going to take that 230 brush again one more time and just run it over the edges, just blending out them edges. We looking cute or whatever. I love this. I love how bright and vibrant these greens are. I love how pigmented they are. So far, so amazing. Absolutely love this palette, even though I literally only used three shades in it. Four shades. Four shades in it. Can't wait to use all the rest of the colors and really dig into it a little bit more. But in the meantime, I'm going to do uh, lashes and mascara. No liner for me. I'm going to put on some mascara. I'm probably going to end up using my usual, which is Urban Decay Perversion Mascara, which is my go-to. And then I'm going to put on some lashes, which are probably going to be Ardell 113s. Or I might do something a little more dramatic than this. I don't know, because this is a really bright look. So I might do like double demi wispies or something. I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll figure it out and I'll be all done up. My face makeup will be done and I'll be back to put on some lips for you guys. Okay guys, we're back. Um, complexion looks okay. I feel like I tried to do my minimalistic um, complexion that I normally do with just concealer in the absolute essentialist areas uh, when I probably should have just caved and put foundation on, to be totally honest. But it's okay. It's a little textured. We'll live, you know, we will, we will live to beat another day. Through what I used, I used my Cover FX Power Play Concealer just in the areas where I am the most red, which is right here through my, my nasal labial region. Um, and then I went all over the face and to set with the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder, which I haven't used in a while. Um, you do have to be careful with that stuff a little bit because it can emphasize texture if you're not careful. But I also use the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, surprising no one, favorite bronzer of all time ever. And then I also used the Saharan Blush Palette Volume 2 from Juvia's Place. I used the shade Tau, this guy, this orangey guy. Definitely very, very, very pigmented. So I had to go really light on it and then I had to put another layer of powder over top because even with a light hand, it was super, super, super pigmented, which is fine. You will never hear me complaining about something being pigmented because honestly, like I've said before, the light complected individuals like myself have enough representation, but I really feel like a lot of blushes end up disqualifying themselves from use just because they're not pigmented enough for deeper complected people to use. So I'm super happy to see that even in the shade, the color story that was sort of looks more along the lines of a lighter complected person could still be used by someone of a deeper complexion because it's pigmented enough. And then Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy Highlight, some MAC Fix Plus to dewy everything up again. And even though we're looking a little textured through the nose here, uh, which is odd because I exfoliated last night, so it should be uh, super good, but that will improve with time. Usually when my oils start to come through, things start looking a little better in that category. So I'm not super worried about it. So now for lips, there's a couple of different directions I could go with this. I could easily do a green and just do full Kermit the Frog realness. I could do a nude. I could do a pink. I could do a more orangey color. Um, I could do a black. Part of me would be sorely tempted to just do green and just pull a Kermit the Frog and throw all caution to the wind. But at the same time, I also kind of want to do something different. I don't know. I don't know. Green is tough um, in terms of coming up with a really good lip color to match it with. Um, I might just end up doing some nude lip balm or something just to keep things simple because I'm probably going to be going out to dinner later today and I'm not going to want to fuss with a dark lip. So I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do right now. 
not very much of a drastic change this time around, is there? Uh, I did bake lightly with the Fit Me powder to try and smooth out the sides of my nose a bit, and that did work. Um, so I guess I just need to put more powder on when I'm using that stuff. It's definitely not a dusting type of powder. Other than that, I used the Bite Beauty uh, liquefied lipstick in the shade Caramelized. This is a really beautiful nude. I love this on me. Like, it's just my perfect nude. It's my lips, but a little bit warmer and a little bit more lively. So you guys know my lips are very dry. And if I wear nudes that are too kind of pink or cool in undertone, it can kind of make me look dead or like 20 years older than I am. So this isn't doing my teeth any favors. They do look a little bit yellow, but it suits this look because it isn't taking attention away from the eyes. It's not competing. Without further ado, the thing I always forget to do, let's do some awkward posing. Awkward posing, looking down, looking forward, looking fierce. I absolutely love how this look came out. It did take a little bit of doing, it did take a little bit of effort, um, but that was mostly in the complexion category and that had nothing to do with this eyeshadow palette. Guys, this is beautiful. If you are a fan of green shades, run, do not walk, and snatch this palette up. As I am uh, filming this today, they do have a sale going on on Juvia's Place, so normally this palette is $20, but it's marked down right now to $16, which is not bad at all for an eyeshadow palette, guys. I've paid twice, three, even four times what this costs. Um, and oftentimes for shadows that aren't anywhere near as good. The quality in this is fantastic. Regardless of your complexion, I think you'll be able to definitely work with this. And I'm really happy with the way the look came out today. I cannot wait to play with this some more. I think it's gonna be super fun. I think it's gonna quickly become kind of a go-to uh, look maker for me. Be and really, that's what Juvia's Place palettes have been. And I, I didn't even notice it. It sort of happened without me realizing it, but Looking back through all of my Instagram posts, literally all of my favorite looks where I looked at it and went, yes, that was a look I was really happy with, were all Juvia's Place palettes. So I've been really happy with their quality. Without further ado, I hope you guys found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining. If you did, there's a button for that. Spank that like button in the butt. You know it deserves it. And if you want to see more from me, you've got a couple options now. You can click the videos on either side of my head to binge if you're bored or bummed out. Or hey, you can hit that button that looks like my face and subscribe and become a member of the faithful today. I put out new videos every Sunday. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and joining me today. And I will see you in the next video. Toodles!